Thank you, everybody. Welcome to the Hold the Line podcast. Sean Foyt, I am coming to you remotely today, and I'm super excited because I have a great friend and legend and hero. Kurt Cameron is with us, and we are both, I'm in Oklahoma, he's in Texas. We are both kind of got our janky screens lined up for this <laughs> interview today. <laughs> hey, thanks so much, man, for coming on. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Um, so are you in a hotel right now? Because I'm in a hotel right now. I'm at a friend's house in the corner room of a, of a good friend of mine's house in Oklahoma. Oh, okay, cool. Well, this is great. I, I love this technology where we can get together like this. And I'm super excited for Super Spreader coming out in movie theaters. So yeah. uh, I want to, I want to, I want to pick your brain and hear what you're thinking about this, what you're hoping for. And uh, I, I'd love to share my thoughts with you as well. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it is, it, it's obviously super significant. And uh, to be honest, a little bit <laughs> scary because, yeah, a week from today, the film comes out in almost 600 theaters across America. It's, we never dreamed of doing this. It wasn't something that I ever had a plan for. And I thought, you know what, if there's one person that I want to hear from that's infiltrated that industry and been one of the strongest promoters of the gospel, not even just the gospel, but but also just freedom. And, and, and especially in this season where we need that boldness and courage, you've been the guy. And so I'm just so pumped you came on. I want to hear your heart. Well, obviously, we'll get into super spreader and stuff, but I want to hear your heart on, on, on what you see God doing right now in the movie industry, in the film industry. Um, what, what's happening? Like, how, how can we be encouraged or know that, that something's taking place? <clears throat> I think I think it's really wise to, to ask the question, what is God doing, not only in the film industry, but what is he doing in the church? Yeah. Because things are changing. What is he doing in the civil government uh, mm -hmm. in our states and in our, our nation's capital? What is he doing in the family? Because it seems like the foundations of everything are getting shaped. Yeah. And, and and I think it's good right now because I think we've gotten kind of apathetic and lazy yeah. as the family of faith in so many of these spheres of influence. So, right. uh, you know, it, gone are the days where we think we can just abandon movie making and television because Hollywood is dirty. Gone are the days where we can say, oh, you know, politics is secular and, and you, Jesus is coming soon. So all that's going to burn anyway. Let's not spend too much time there. Uh, because why? Because we have kids and we know that they're going to be living in the world that we leave for them. And it's yeah. been 2000 years since people believe they were living in the last days. Who's to say that we don't have another 2000 years here. Right. And so we ought right. to get involved in movie making, yeah. in yeah. music concerts, in political government yeah. and everything else so that we can create the world we want for our kids rather than complaining the world that we let other people create for our kids. So yeah. that's a long introduction to say, I think God is doing things in the movie world. Um, I, I, my mind always goes back to the passion of the Christ and there have been projects before that, but that was so significant to let the movie industry know that there's a massive hunger and thirst for spiritual things and specifically gospel things right. in the hearts and minds of people. And there is a legitimate business there. Yeah. And if that money is used wisely and it's in reinvested back into the kingdom, I can't see why God would not continue to bless the right. church when they make more movies like that. And ones that I've tried to be a part of and, uh, and super spreader as well. So I, I think it's a, a great place to be investing time and talent. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you're right. I the, I love how you're hitting on the uh, kind of the escapist mentality that uh, prior generations have had, and maybe even some in our generation, where the, you know the world's going to hell, and and uh, let's get in our little enclave and 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 ride it out, or let's let's head to the yeah. bunkers and get our ARs and <laughs> hope we make it. And I think when you look uh, at scripture and you look at revival history, that's really never how God moves. I mean, he's always looking for somebody to rise and become the light in the darkness, become the hope in the place of fear and become, you know, yes. uh, when everything else is shaken, he's, he's revealing a people that will not be shaken. 
Um, and, you know, I, I think that I just love that. Like we have to engage. And I, and I think it's the same way with government. Like you said, like people are like, oh, I don't want to really get involved with government or whatever. Well, guess what? Government wants to get involved with you. <laughs> and we saw that. 100%. We saw that in, in, in the pandemic. We saw that in 2020. And I think even connecting with you now, because I know you were doing similar things. You were gathering people. You guys were worshiping. You were kind of fighting those, uh, those same draconian mandates as we were. And so the, in this film, in some ways, releasing this story feels like it's connected a lot, too, even to what you were doing in that season. Yeah, man, I, 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 you just said something that just keeps ringing in my ears. Um, you know, you, you people don't want to have anything to do with government, but government wants a lot to do with you. Um, somebody once told me uh, government is religion externalized. And I thought, wait, wait a second, wait a minute. Those, those are two totally different spheres. What are you talking about? But it, 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 there, there's so much truth in that. Um, it's, it's an inescapable part of any culture. And um, if I'm a Christian, if I love Jesus, and if the law of my life is to honor God and to love others as myself, well, that's my basis of, of that's my moral basis for law in my community. And right. those laws are going to be enforced or else evil will reign. And so government really is an outworking of the inner principles of my heart and of my soul. Right. And if we abandon that, that, that function of our religion, um, there will be another bigger, badder religion that God will temporarily allow to move in and be in the, uh, the force business, the, the boss business, the in charge business. And we've seen through the pandemic how they will have no qualms about shutting our churches down and shutting right. our schools down and shutting our businesses right. down and ruining us. And I think it's a great wake up call. And God uh, does this all throughout the Old Testament where he will use pagan nations to discipline his own people and say, wow. okay, if you wanna walk away from me, um, I'm not going to chase you down. Uh, I'm gonna let you go and hand you over to your, uh, to your spanky idols and see how well they serve you. And wow. when they don't, um, guess what? God always has been there so far. He's always been there and, and been willing to take back the, the, the unfaithful bride. And yeah. I think, wow, maybe this is a time that we as the family of faith uh, need to see the pattern of God's merciful, kind concern in letting us, uh, you know, near the edge of the cliff so that we'll turn back to him. And, uh, and I do see rumblings of revival. I do see people waking up. I, I, I mean, don't you, yeah. Sean, don't yeah. you see people um, at, at, um, within the church, um, people trying, trying to create channels for messages to get out that are outside the, the normal ways through social media, through music, through movies, through all sorts of local voluntary unions, people doing all sorts of things to get the message of the gospel out when yeah. traditional, traditional channels are corrupted. And, uh, and again, that's, that's what you're doing through, through um, your concerts. That's what you're doing through your revival meetings. That's what you're doing now with Super Spreader. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you and I'm, I'm, I'm with you and I'm so excited for what God is doing here. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you. I, I, I really, uh, I, and we just honor, you know, in, in so many ways how you've pioneered, uh, pioneered things for believers and, and really broken through barriers. I think that, uh, you know, a lot of people, they, they didn't see, you know, God is, he's so re he's redemptive, you know, he can take the most broken situations, the most broken seasons yeah. and the most broken industries and, 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 and shine his light there. And you're right. He does use people that he uses people that the world would never think like, like Mel Gibson to do that film and he uses yeah. people in politics like somebody like trump that people have a hard time with it's like god will use whoever he wants and you know one thing that i'm realizing is is that covid was it, it was an interesting season in where it, it really did wake people up to the power of government their control their their uh agendas that they have you know marijuana dispensaries strip clubs are open bars are open they're essential the church is not However, it's amazing because God actually, it, we, you know, I, we had this phrase, the church left, left the building. And we started having to 
take the gospel and church into the public square, into places like this weekend. We're going to be in downtown Philadelphia on Saturday in, in Independence Mall. Then we're going to go the next day into Great. Times Square. You know, we have permits for both of these places, and it's literally like church in the wild. It's, <laughs> it's, and people get saved, they get healed, they get delivered, and it doesn't come without controversy. And I think that's one of the most uh, incredible aspects that I love about this film is that it, it carries the controversy. I mean, dude, we had to, they wanted us to, to, to rate this R when we went to the, what is it, the MP, what's the rating organization? I forget what they're called. Yeah. You got to submit the film to. They wanted us to rate this R. And so we had to back off and bleep the curse words from the protesters in Antifa just to get it to PG-13 because I mean, the language, it was so gnarly, but it was actually what we endured in that season. And, you know, we talk about in there, we talk about racism and we talk about the, the battle over all of that stuff, you know, and we were called white nationalists and we were called this. We talk about a Christian nationalism. We talk about the history of communism and why people from those nations started to warn America. This is how it began here. You know, we, we have uh, clips from Billy Graham of him speaking about the day when communism comes to America, they're going to, you know, it's a collision, you know? And uh. so it, 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 it's, there's a lot of juicy stuff in this, but I think wow. at the end of the day, it, it, it's highlighting uh, this crazy season that we've just lived through. And hopefully, I mean, for me, I think, I hope it helps believers take inventory on how they responded in that season. Because yeah. like, like, like you mentioned, or like you alluded to, I think that was a trial run. You know, I think there's, there's more things that we're going to face as believers coming up. You oh, know, 100%. This is oh man, goodness. hundred percent. You're, you're, you're right, John. You know, I, I recently read, reread that book animal farm. Um, yeah. I, I was, did George Orwell write that as well? I think he did. Um, animal farm. And uh, anyway, but you remember, it's a story about the farm and all the animals in the farm and the animals finally get together and go, hey, wait a minute, we're the ones that do all the work. And the farmer just takes our eggs. He turns us into bacon. Let's get rid of the farmer and then we'll run the place. And, <laughs> and then, uh, of course, there are some animals who are smarter than others. And they say, well, because we're the smartest, we need to control the place. And so we get to sleep in the, in the, in the beds. We get to eat the best food. We make the rules. Um, and the rules apply for you, but they don't really apply for us. And it was slowly this this takeover uh, with the with the with the facade to all the animals that that you guys own the place. This is your place. It's 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 of the animals. It's for the right. animals. By the animals. Except certain animals are more equal than others. And and it was just one after the other. And just when you thought that that the dirtiest trick had been played by the pigs on the chickens and the cows and the goats, that was just a trial run, like you're saying, for the next thing, for wow. the next thing that just right. slowly would usher in total authoritarianism. And that's what we hear from our Taiwanese neighbors. That's what we hear from our Russian right. neighbors. That's what we hear from right. our Cuban neighbors. They're telling us, you guys, wake right. up. You, right. you don't understand what's happening. Right. You, you believe what the media right. is telling you. This is not the deal. Read your history book or come over yeah. for dinner. You know, we'll make you some borscht and, and explain the whole thing yeah. to you. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and that's so wild because when we, when I really felt, you know, I had 20 years of history uh, in, in missions. And so that's, you know, I cut my teeth in ministry on the mission field. And so underground churches, North Korea, you know, Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, uh, Saudi Arabia, all these places the Lord's called us into that, that, that church was my source of encouragement in this season. Um, and, and, you know, when we rolled into Portland and you see this in the film, when we roll into Portland to do let us worship, I could not find anybody that would help us pull off a church service in downtown Portland. Like none of the pastors were behind it, you know, very like I couldn't find worship leaders, couldn't find musicians. And then I met wow. a bunch of Russians. And the moment I met some Russians and you see this in the film, I said, they said, we want to help you. We're going to do this. We're going to bring sound gear. We're going to bring equipment. We're going to bring our band. We're going to bring all this stuff. And I remember asking them like, well, why do you want to help us? And why do you want to help me? You don't even know me. And they said, because we don't want to let, we refuse to allow the city we live in look like the That's place right. where we fled. That's right. That's right. Preach it. You know, gosh, isn't that crazy? Isn't it crazy that those who come out of communism and totalitarianism are now coming back to the land of the free? 
to warn us and to help us. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, what exciting, hey, Sean, what exciting times we get to live in. We were not cursed with living in boring, uneventful days. I mean, I mean, <laughs> here true. we are. We're in the middle of the, 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 the Captain America movie. I mean, we're, we're yeah. in the middle of, uh, you know, the Lion King where Scar, it looks as though he's taken over. There's no hope. Simba's, you know, out there trying to figure out who he is in the wilderness. But you know what? <laughs> then he hears from the father. He comes running back in to take his place as yeah. the rightful king. He defeats Scar and life comes back in to the Pride Lands as the demons are slinking off into the Shadowlands. And I believe that that is kind of what revival looks like. When right. we, as the sons and daughters of God, hear from, from our Father in Heaven, and we remember who we are and we take our rightful place as his heirs and as his sub-regents co-creating co -creating the future of the world as we follow him and apply his word to everything, movies, music, government, school, education, family, church, everything, uh, I think that the demons start shrieking and running off into the shadow lands yeah. and life yeah. comes back into the pride lands. Like, and that's, that's an exciting time to be alive. And we're here. So the question is just, you know, who, who are we going to be? Uh, are, 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 are we going to be hiding in a corner or are we going to, we going to step out and be like our, like your Russian friends and say, we're here to help. I was put on the stage of the world for this moment and I want to play my role well. It's, it's so true. I mean, we, 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 these are not as uneventful times. And I think that they, they, there are times that re require great courage and, yeah. you know, as much as in, in that, you know, the, the films that you are doing and the, the parts that you're playing to encourage and wake up the body, I'm praying that this, that this film does the same thing. And I think gone are the days when, when we can, we can basically like, I think there's so much at stake right now. Like there's so much at stake and, and especially here in America, there's so much at stake and yeah. that really the future, like it belongs to the bold, to the brave, to the courageous, to those that are willing to take a stand and push yeah. back. And, and I, I, you know, Billy Graham has a statement I love. It's one of my favorite, you know, when a courageous man takes a stand, the spines of everyone else are stiffened. And my prayer is that the spines of people would be stiffened through through the through the movies and the films that you're doing. I know you just had a big one that came out, uh, and and filling these these theaters across America with the sound of courage, the gospel, boldness. Like I think America's hungry. It's what for we that. need? Oh, it's what we need. It's what God wants to do. I, I was thinking, Sean, like if I were God, and I were looking at, at the at, at my world right? My world, I made it if I'm God. And I'm thinking, wow, you know, I could just snap my fingers and I could have all the wrong guys, all the bad guys drop over from a heart attack. I could have the good guys move into power and, and, and I could create peace. And I'm thinking, but that's not really what our God wants because he could do that. What he wants is the heart of his bride to be holy devoted to him and sometimes she doesn't learn until you let her run off with her, her 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 pimps and her lovers and she finally realizes what a train wreck that is and then she right. comes back and says i'm a i'm a fool you are the only one that that i that i want to live for right and, yeah. and i think if that's yeah. what god wants perhaps this is all a very wise and good plan to bring us to our senses and purify the collective yeah. heart of the bride of Christ. So again, that, that, that's sort of how I can celebrate at the cosmic level, the nasty things that are going on that right. like freak me out and keep me up at night. And, yeah. and, and here's something that, that gives me evidence that that's going on. Um, I'm, you know, I kind of cut my teeth. Uh, I was an atheist, right? So I, and, and I learned my, my theology from John MacArthur and R.C. Sproul. So I, so I haven't been looking for a lot of, uh, of like, you know, um, supernatural miracles and things. So I'm, <laughs> I'm more on the conservative theological side. But I love when I can't explain something by right. other means than that God intervened, right? right. That, that's kind of exciting as I get, right? As, as, yeah. <laughs> 
as, as, as a, a guy, uh, you know, trained by Reformed Baptists. So the movie I just had come out, Life Mark, uh, the Kendrick brothers and I did this together. We started this in 2019. So this was a movie about the value of life and the beauty of adoption that was supposed to come out probably in 2021. But because of the COVID pandemic and the shutdown of all of the theaters, it got delayed. And then wow. who would have known? Oh, and not only that, all of the movie distributors passed on the project because of the content. It was a, it's a pro-life movie. So they all passed and said no. Even the company that distributed all the, the, the Kendrick Brothers movies. So, you know, Fireproof, $30 million. War Room, $60 million. These are huge profit-making movies. Kendrick's come out with their next one and they say no. And Universal says no. Everybody says no. We're like, what? We, we, we made, we've made this movie. We've invested a whole bunch of time and money. Everybody's saying no. And then Fathom Events steps up to the plate and says, we would love to distribute this movie. And not only are we gonna just put it in there one night, we wanna open up theaters and go over a weekend. We, we, we think this is important. Well, to me, that's, that's just a God thing. And right. then to have it land in the movie theaters Post at a time that was a year late for us and we were getting nervous, but who would have thought in our lifetime Roe versus Wade would have been overturned. And then right on the heels of that Supreme Court decision, which we can't control, here comes a movie that celebrates life and adoption in the movie theater. So wow. all I'm saying is there's a divine Come on. marketing PR scheduler who is dropping things into place at just the right time. And I yeah. am confident that he is the same person who's doing it for Super Spreader and is in the theaters at just the right time because all of us are so hungry for it. Man, that is so powerful. I love that. I mean, it, it, it really is. It's funny, like, and we we get so frustrated with the delays, the delays, the delays, you know, the canceling, yeah. the, the, you know, the, 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 the people that, that don't want to show it, they don't want, but God's just, the, he's playing chess, man. Like everyone else totally. is playing checkers. Totally. He's playing chess. And, and I think that I celebrate that because I'm telling you, and I want to, you know, when when that decision came down, of course, we were, you know, we were praying 50 days around the Supreme Court when the the, the leak happened, um, because we were just praying, OK, God, bind these justices together with their initial decision. You know, don't let them be swayed by the political persecution, by people coming to their house and rallying, by the intimidation tactics. You know, there was a, an assassin that came after Kavanaugh to kill him, like. Don't let them be intimidated. So we were praying for 50 days uh, from our ministry place there on Capitol Hill. Awesome. And I remember when, when the decision came out, and I've been praying for this since I was in high school. And I, I remember thinking back then, if this ever happened in my life, it probably won't. Everyone says it could never happen. If it did happen, there's going to be rejoicing in the street. There is going to be a complete, like people are going to lose it. They're going to be celebrating all over. America, the church is going to have a historic victory. Um, and everyone was silent. And I was faced with this sobering reality that so many people, even that I knew that have been praying since I was in high school for the same thing, refused to celebrate, thought it was too political, wouldn't talk about it. And in a worst case scenario, they were actually saying that they didn't even agree with it. And so I remember I was so frustrated. I was so angry. And I was about to get on Twitter and just rage on these pastors and just rage on these weak, woke, whatever. And the Lord speaks to me and he says, don't do that. He says, they, they don't understand the value of life. Remind them, Imago Dei made in the image of God. And so I wrote a song called Imago Dei that I released. And I feel like what you're doing with this film and what's, what, what God's speaking is the value of life, the beauty of adoption, like in, you're inspiring a generation to value life like God values it. And I'm just so grateful for that. Well, I'm grateful for you, Sean. And um, together, let's just praise God for all the good things that he's doing. Um, how cool is it that, you know, he, he makes a Sean Foyt and... Um, <clears throat> who loves to make music, who loves people, who loves to do what you do. And, you know, he didn't stick you uh, in an accounting office somewhere, right? Where like, that's what you have to do for a living. Now he's made accountants 
who run the world and keep everything in line and everything in order and help us, you know, uh, be profitable as businesses. And so God knows who you are, who I am, who everyone is, and he puts us in places where we can have maximum impact for the kingdom yeah. based on the gifts yeah. that he's given us and the desires that he's put inside of our heart. How, how, how great is our God? Uh, how fortunate, how blessed and privileged we are to be alive, to be alive now and to yeah. be alive right now, living in the United States of, of America where heroes and heroines are needed. Yeah. Everyone can apply. Yeah. And you can do it in the lane that God has, has, has placed you in. Amen. And I'm so glad that you are uh, just leaning in and working with all of your might at what God has given your hands to do. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. You're, you're a, like I said, a, a great encourager. And I, uh, I don't want to take any more of your time. I'm so grateful for the time that you had. Oh, yeah. It's been so beneficial. Is there any last you're words? You're sanctifying my time. Yeah. <laughs> I Is love there it. any last I, words from your from your hotel room there, your uh, studio for the day <laughs> that you want to uh, impart? <laughs> oh my go goodness! Um, I heard a great joke. What's the difference between a Catholic and a Baptist? But I can't tell it because someone's going to freeze frame the joke, and then I'll, I'll get in trouble. So let's see. What else could I <laughs> leave you with my parting words? Um, let's see. Uh, I kind of like uh, that. You, you know, uh, let's just pray together. Let's. How about we do okay. that? Yeah, let's do that. Can, can I can I can I pray or can I start? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Father, you are you are so you are so gracious and so kind to use creatures like us who have walked away from you, who have um, disgraced your word, who have uh, taken your name in vain. Lord, uh, we are so desperately in need of a complete overhaul of our of our thinking and, and of our feeling and, uh, and our, of our living. And we thank you that um, you are in the business of doing that. You haven't just dressed us up with religion. We're not a, a mere retread of our old selves. We're brand new creatures in Christ. Jesus, thank you for what you did on the cross. Holy Spirit, thank you for illuminating our heart and being our resident truth teacher. Guide us and lead us into all truth. And and help us to work with all of our might at the things you've given us to do. Uh, being moms and dads, husbands and wives, musicians, poets, storytellers, um, builders, um, yeah. uh, disruptors, wh whatever it is that you've called us to do, sanctify that work and glorify yourself with it. We love you, Lord. Uh, we thank you. I, I personally thank you for Super Spreader being in the theaters, and I, I pray that you will draw uh, millions of people to uh, to see this film and and that this would just be the first of many. We love you, Lord, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I love it. <laughs> thanks, I don't even bro. need to pray. Hey, thanks for, thanks for oh, coming on. Oh, that's right. On. I said I amen. It. I didn't even give you room. I'm so sorry. No, I, you, <laughs> you said everything that needed to be said. We're good. Hey, God you bless know, you, man. You know, listen. I like the long hair. I had I had a whole bunch of hair back in the back in the eighties, but it was it, the party was up on top, not down here on the sides like you got going on. And and uh, but now I've grown a beard. And somebody once said to me, Kirk, you know you need to grow a beard. You know why? I said why? He, he said because we have words for people who don't have beards: women and children. And I said, all right, I'm gonna grow, I'm gonna grow a beard. And then it turned out my wife kind of dug it, so I kept it. So I think, well, I hey, think Sean White with a beard, but like, you know, like a mane would be pretty epic. Uh, maybe I'll grow it and like somehow just connect it all. Like it'll just that's, be like. That's it. That's it. It'll just, just be like the glory. It'll be like the glory that, that like the, you know, the, the anointing that ran down Aaron's beard and all. Yeah, that's right. That's what I'm going that's for. Right. That's right. Turn well, it thank you, man. Well, everybody go out <laughs> and see. Yeah, how, is your film still out? Yeah, it's still out. What's today? Wednesday, Thursday, I think. Are we at Thursday yet? Yeah, we're Thursday. Yeah. Uh, it's out. Tonight's the last night in theaters that you could see it. You go to lifemarkmovie.com. Uh, you can type in your zip code. It'll tell you where it is. Um, but man, I can't wait to see Super Spreader. Awesome, I'll be there. Man. All right, brother. Bless you, man. Thank you. Thanks for coming Thanks on. Thanks a lot. You too.